Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette, this is Board Game Inquisition and welcome to July's monthly roundup video. The one where I talk about the changes to my board game collection, games I've been playing and a bit of just general chit chat. You know, I've sat here for about five minutes now staring into the camera trying to decide what to say. Um, and I've made a lot of these monthly roundup videos by now. You think I get better at it? Maybe, or they get a little easier. Um, and of course, these are one of my most favorite types of videos to make because these are the ones where, A, I get to talk to you about games. I get to talk to you about games I love, um, new games, exciting games. And of course, um, I hope you'll tell me about yours as well. Um, I really have a lot of fun seeing what everyone else has been playing. So do remember to play along at home um, as I talk about, yeah, games. There's never enough board games, right? Um, so I hope July has treated you well. Um, it kind of went fairly fast, or at least in my estimation. It's not feeling particularly summery. Has anyone else had that vibe? It's not feeling particularly like summer? No. And I've been on holidays for the past week or so. This is in fact Friday of, of holidays, so I have another three days to go. But of course the monthly roundup cannot be stopped um, and it must be made. So hence why I am here um, getting to talk to you yeah, in the middle of my holidays, kind of. Um, but there has been lots of games played, so, you know, there's always bonuses and whatnot here. So, as usual, um, I get to start with telling you the new games I've added to my collection this month. And this month's been a special one, not just because there were holidays, but because it's my husband's birthday. And that usually means we get to buy something special that we normally wouldn't have, or get to buy games that are a little bit out of our price range, perhaps. And this month was absolutely zero exception. I don't even feel a bit guilty about it, to be honest. Um, so let's jump right in and see actually what arrived at my door. So it feels like a lot of these games actually came pretty early in the month. So I've actually played them for once before talking to you about them. It's just kind of unusual in itself. And those of you who follow along on my Twitter account or on my Instagram account will know exactly what's been showing up on, on Fridays. I make a post about, you know, the new games. So if you haven't had a chance to check that out, you may want to. Um, and there's all sorts of fun stuff going on in those. So it's at BG Inquisition is my handle on Twitter. Um, come say hello. And on Instagram, I'm Board Game Inquisition. And I post some pretty, well, I think are fun and nice photos of, um, of games and talk about them as well, of course. It's very exciting. So the first game, um, and I've been holding you off, you know, with beta breath rages, and I think that's because I'm toying with you a little bit. Um, because this is a game that I mentioned many, many moons ago as a game I'd really, really love to try, um, but thought I would never obtain. Um, and instantly, you probably know this is a Kickstarter game. Um, it's one with a lot of miniatures. It's incredibly large and incredibly pricey. And oh, oh, so desirable. And this is Time of Legends Joan of Arc from Mythic Games. Um, and what's what's special about this is that it's a war war game essentially, um, and I love war games. I used to play a lot of them. Actually, I was probably a war gamer before I was a board gamer. Um, but there's something about playing war games, like you know, Warhammer Fantasy, Warhammer 40k. You know, the people with all the little models on the tables. Um, and measuring tapes and whatnot. Um, and those games are a very specific type of puzzle and they're quite a fun one. Um, they're also very tactile because you have, usually you'll have an army and someone else will play an army and you will battle it out in the field and your armies will have special abilities and cool stuff to do. Um, and they take quite a bit of time to play and are quite an investment. Um, but once you're into them, I think they're really fun. I, I like the type of game that they offer you. It's different. It's definitely a different experience to kind of your regular games. And so for quite some time, I've been looking for a replacement for a war game, but I wanted one that came in a box, like a board game where you didn't have to buy all these extra things or extra parts. Um, and Joan of Arc really hit that kind of mark for me. Um, and not only that, it just, it sounds cool. So what Joan of Arc is, and I've played about five or six scenarios at this point, um, is basically, yeah, there's a bunch of battles you play, um, but they're not necessarily straight up battles, they're scenarios. So sometimes you'll have to save a village, you know, sometimes you'll have to find a werewolf. Yeah, I know that makes sense with Joan of Arc, right? Um, and I think it's really, really fun to do these different kinds of objectives where you don't have to fight necessarily head to head, although you can do that. 
there are a number of armies in the box. Um, I only got the base game and what's called the Reliquary box, which seems to be a box based entirely on Kickstarter extras. I don't even know, but you can play as the French, and this is like 14th century, by the way, Joan of Arc's like 14th century. So there, there are the French, there are the British, who are also kind of French. Um, I learned a lot of history while playing this. Um, and there's all sorts of other people as well in the box that I haven't even gotten to. This game has so much content. <laughs> I, I just, I couldn't fathom it. Every time we opened the box to take something else out of it, we would find more things. And the miniatures are really quite small. So there's more, there's even more in the box than I could ever have comprehended. Um, it's really, really impressive what you get. Like the game is really expensive. Um, I'm lucky I managed to buy it secondhand. I got a really great deal on it, and it has done nothing but surpass my expectations. It's been, it's been actually well worth the money um, in that sense. Like overall, the game is really nicely put together. It looks beautiful. It's a huge time to sink. It takes so much time to set it up, to put it back, because there are just so many small pieces. But that kind of is the nature of war games. And so far, I found the, the rule book to be fairly decent. And there's a lot of FAQs and things online um, from other players as well. Nothing is quite perfect, I suppose. Um, but the real question is, you know, is it fun? Would I play it again? Um, absolutely. I I've had a blast playing this. Um, it really does feel like a, a war game and you need to know that going in. It is one of those games where you are battling each other, you know, in pitch point battles and you're maneuvering people into better positions and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, and it, it captures it really, really well. Um, I love that basically you have like a group of units going together they're not individual models which i like there are special characters of special abilities and they're really cool as well um and I, I sound yeah i sound like i'm just going over the top a little bit that's probably because i am but i think i just surprised myself with how much more fun it is than i thought it was going to be so that is Joan of Arc, um, well, Time of Legends, Joan of Arc from Mythic Games. What a long title. Um, but yeah, really impressed with that. Looking forward to playing more games. It's one of the few games actually we've played back to back um, in a good while. We played two or three games of it back to back. And yeah, so, so much fun. Um, hits all the war gaming itches for me. So yeah, super, super excited to be able to try that out. Um, and thank God for birthdays, right? Or I'd never have got to buy it. <laughs> So yeah, so that was the first big arrival this month. Um, so the next thing to turn up were actually um, genuine birthday presents um, before we found out about, you know, Joan of Arc. Um, and so this comes down to some new maps for, for Concordia, um, which I believe are like the Britain map and whatever's on the other side of the Britain map. Um, we still have to pull that out. Um, of course, you know, if you don't know what Concordia is, you should go and try it out. It is a fantastic Euro game um, with very little theme, but lots of mechanics. And it's really, really fun. Like, I think, I think everybody likes Concordia, right? I could see why you wouldn't, because the game looks like the most boring thing on earth, but it's really, 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 really fun. Um, so love Concordia, wanted more maps. So I think that means we own all of the maps. And we got some kind of bonus tiles, I think, as well. So that was really great. Um, actually, yeah, that I haven't played yet. But it's an expansion, so I don't feel like you have to play it as quickly as, the, as if you got just a whole brand new game. Um, and speaking of brand new games, the month wouldn't be complete without getting a brand new Stefan Feld title. Right, 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 right. And this is one that um, we picked up because it was on sale while we were buying the maps for Concordia. And this is Forum Trajanum. And it came out at Eschenspiel last year. Um, Stefan Feld had two releases last year, and this was one. We had played the other, which is Carpe Diem, um, and it didn't go down well with us. It was kind of a poly animo mixing thing. Um, yeah, we weren't overly happy happy with it but this was the other release and because Carpe Diem hadn't gone down so well we assumed this one wasn't all that great either shame on us just just shame um because this is a really fun game um it's it's very fiddly to set up as usual it doesn't have a lot of theme we are Romans building Romans <laughs> doing Roman things <laughs> um, basically yeah you're building your city you're sending people to the senate in Rome um, and you're moving up victory points tracks and everything you do gives you victory points um, you know I love a Stefan Feld 
um, but it was really really fun and it had a very clever um, mechanic that I liked so when you start the game you have like a little you have your board and it has your city laid out on it and there's these little tiles and the basically as the game progresses you take these little tiles off your board to get these bonuses so you can do other things but the way it's laid out is in a, a row and a, and a grid basically um, and so once at the start of each turn you'll flip over two symbols and whatever ones match you take one from each row or grid to try and make space to build your houses um it sounds really funny when i said it loud like that but um it's really really cool to play with like it's very what i want to call it is like a delicate puzzle where it's a really interesting choice to have to make but not incredibly taxing it's not like oh god the game's over if i don't do this correctly and i have to plot it out but there is a bit of thought into it there in what's happening next and how you're going to play everything out um so that was a really nice surprise um and i wish we got it sooner um we absolutely enjoyed it a lot it's not like a it's oh, no, are any of stefan felt game heavy Wait, maybe aquasphere i don't know there are some more tricky i suppose than others um and this one's more straightforward it feels like the kind of weight of castles of burgundy or something like that and um yeah we had a blast with it and it was on sale so that was forum trajanum um and then i think the last thing i'm gonna check my list everybody am up to Oh, okay, almost the last thing. Um, so I don't know if you guys watch, um, no pun included, um, they're another board game review channel. I'm sure most of you have heard of them by now. If not, you should check them out. They make some pretty interesting reviews. Um, I don't always agree with what they pick, but I agree how they, I like how they get to their, their end result. You know, they really think everything through. Um, and last week or so they put up um, a new video and this is to do with the 18xx train games and for those of you unfamiliar with those there are specific type of games about trains that are economic in nature um, and all of their titles are a year so it'll be 18 30 18 invent another number because i only know one train game name <laughs> to hand um, and they made an, an entire video talking about these train games um, and they're ones that have a appeal to me for a while um but they have their own shall we say mystique about them um because they seem they take a long time to play they seem quite serious people get quite into them i've heard things about you know playing with spreadsheets and stuff to work out finances and money um and playing that intensely i don't know if it entirely appealed to me and they don't seem to be games that have come to the the masses so to say um they've come to specific specific groups of people play these type of games um and i've wanted to try one but i was a little bit intimidated i guess i think is the best way to put it or also i didn't know where to start there's a whole load of these games of 18xx variety and which one do you pick which one might work at two players which one wouldn't like there was just there was just no way of knowing so this video from no pun included was actually really really helpful and helping um me understand exactly what happens in the game and what each of the different ones might do or offer so out of this video inevitably we bought a train game um because well we wanted to try it anyway and then we felt like we had a little bit of information so we ran with it so um we bought a copy of 1830 um and this was the one that no pun included recommended was that if you're ever going to play the others this one this rule book was the most similar to all of the others so if you learned this one you could learn any of the other ones so we thought that was kind of a sensible thing to do um take note there's only two of us playing this game and these games really aren't designed for two players maybe some of the other special maps are but in general actually economic games with stocks and shares and money that goes up and down don't work well at two because they're designed for all that player interaction and having more people moving money around and 1830 is no different so we got to give it a try actually not long after it arrived which was which was big for us um the first thing you'll have to know is the rule book looks like a television manual um it is literally just like block after block of text um but you know no pun included had prepared us for this eventuality and um, we knew this was going to happen but we got our way to the rule book we got everything set up and we started to play <laughs> This was a long game. Um, it took us about four and a half hours. 
um, and we stopped the game prematurely because it was taking us so long to get to the end. So this this is a game where you are route building and buying stocks and every time you run your train, your train can either earn money and keep it in its kind of um, train bank account or they can pay out dividends to all the people invested in the train company and these things both change the value of the company um, and so the trick is really that you're building routes and you want to build profitable routes so you can have money and the game will end when the bank runs out of money meaning you want to be making money uh, but we just couldn't get the bank to run out because there's only two of us right so it's taken a long time um, for us to drain the bank so we, we sped up the end of the game we we pretended we played seven turns of the same set of trains to kind of empty it out um but otherwise actually there was a lot to like about the game um i liked i you know what i like the money aspect i like the stocks and i like the fact that placing your train down mattered and working out the routes and how it all went together it was fun it like i've always liked those kind of games i you know i like stock games i like train games you know this is kind of good um of course at two um there were far too many stocks um for all the different companies so most of them didn't get invested in and we ended up sitting kind of in the same routine but i do feel like that we want to play it again because we know so much more now than when we started right so after we'd finished we were like if i built my city there instead of there this would have greatly changed everything i'd done or if we'd been more careful and then we upgraded our rails um you know we could have done this instead out. um so i think sometimes well it's a matter i guess of what map you're playing and maybe learning how to master the map a little bit too um but also figuring out how to put things together in the right order to maximize your money and i think that is the appeal of these games that you can do that that you can sit down and work out exactly what the optimal play might actually be um and i didn't want to play it that way and i didn't <laughs> I don't know if it helped or hindered me. Um, I didn't win anyway, even when we tied up the money at the end, but I was not as far behind as I had thought. Um, it was important to be in on everyone else's stocks, not necessarily the winner, but to be, you know, second and things like that. And that matters even further a few more players. So overall, what do I think of 1830? At two, it is questionable, not gonna lie, but it's got a lot going for it i think if you have the right group of people to play it with as well um because the the problem with it is like i can't imagine who out of our friends would play this game with us um because it involves quite a lot of investment knowledge wise although i didn't find it was that difficult to learn it kind of made sense to me i was like oh yeah well of course this would do this you know um it didn't seem out of place or odd um but i did ha i did have fun with it it was cool getting your money every so often like oh you know um it was good so yeah that's my that's my very vague review of 1830 i don't know if we'll play it again or if we'll move it on or what will happen but i'm glad i dipped my toes in and tried so yeah there's got a lot of good to it and some negatives too but it's not the case whatever Everything. Okay, so the final game that I've acquired this month um, isn't quite here yet. It's stuck in a truck. It was supposed to be here by today, so I could have told you about it, but also I wouldn't have played it anyway. And this is Crusaders Thy Will Be Done from Tasty Minstrel Games. And what I know is I like Tasty Minstrel Games. I like roundels and I like euro games. Um, so this this seems to have all of these features um, and I'm looking forward to learning a bit more about it. I've heard people say good things, but I've not heard a lot of people talk about it either. So <laughs> in a world where there are many, many board games, not all the good board games that get talked about, right? So yeah. So that has been all of my purchases um, for this month. Yeah. <laughs> So we just pretend that that, you know, didn't happen. That's like the third time it's fallen off the wall. No matter how I stick it up, it refuses to stay up there. Do we damage anything? No, okay, we're okay. Carry on, carry on, carry on. For just nothing to see here, people. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so that was the purchases for the month. I did get one review copy and I'm looking forward to getting to that. I have a, I have a number still on my pile working my way through. And this is Composition from Koo Games. Um, and this is a word game based around um, 
um, building a symphony. So you collect musical notes um, in your letters or your words so that you can basically create longer words with more notes, more symphonies, and then you get bonuses and victory points. Um, it's very cute, um, it's very fun. I've got it to play once. I want to play more of it obviously closer to review time. Um, but it's been a while since I've had a word game and I think this feels like a good one. I think the, the last word game I had was Wibble Plus Plus um, and I really liked that as well. But it's just not something I would take out ordinarily as a word game. It wouldn't be the first place that my mind would go for games. Um, but I do like them when they pop up occasionally. So if you are a fan of word games, keep your ears tuned to the grindstone. Um, yeah, because there will be a review for that coming soon. So now, now that you've heard all about my stuff, it sounds like I'm bragging actually, doesn't it, when I sit here, I'm like, well, I got this, and I got this. Um, no, hopefully not. Um, but also, I, I, I want to hear about your games. It's like, I want it to be like, oh, look what I got, I can't wait to show you this, and then you to go, well, look, here's what I got, and tell me what's inside, and let me know all about it. You know, I, that's what, I always, what I've always wanted for this kind of video. Um, so yeah, tell me what you've picked up this month. Has it been fun? Have you had any disappointments? Anything you feel like you need to play a few more times before you really know? And will you? <laughs> more importantly, will I get 1830 back to the table? I just don't know. We'll see, have to see what the future brings. Um, so yeah, so this is section one. Um, so let's pop on to section two where I talk about trades. So trades. Um, so this month actually has been pretty good for trades. It's been quite quiet for a while. But historically, this month has always been good for trades because this time last year we traded for a rather serious amount of games. Um, now, I'm looking down at my list of what my trades were and I don't have written what I actually traded for them. But I can assure you it was stuff I really wanted to get rid of. My husband did a very impressive job in the last month of getting rid of games that we've had since Essen and thought no one would ever want to play because they were terrible. Um, and so I'm really, really delighted that some of those made it made it out of here give us some shelf space um, which we replaced with of course more games because ha 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 trades so the first game that came with trades is agra and I do actually know what I traded for Agra because we traded for Agra before the lockdown started um, and then it couldn't get posted and it was delayed and it was stuck and all sorts of stuff and then it magically finally showed up. Um, so I traded the new Kalis game for this which I really hated. So it was nice to get something different. Um, the interesting thing to note about Agra um, from Quinn Games is the fact it's from Quinn Games. This is my fourth title from Quinn Games and none of them have stuck. Um, <laughs> I've gone through a number of their titles because they look like something I'd like and then none of it has ever panned out and when we traded for Agra I didn't realise it was from Quinn Games and it was only when I looked it up kind of to add it into our collection list I was like oh gosh it's a Quinn Games we're doomed my husband's gonna kill me um, because we just had such a stack of them and we couldn't get rid of them um, so I, I had, did not have high hopes for Agra although it looked different um, when I'd seen it set up and in videos um, to a lot of their other games so I, I had much hope for Agra um, and Agra is Actually, yeah, it is quite different to their, to their other games. It's a very big game, and that's spatially, mentally, <laughs> um, and it is a worker placement game about basically trading for goods of the right types and then giving them into the gills um, and gaining honor kind of with your sultan. I want to call him a sultan. I don't know if he is a sultan. He's the guy in charge. He's at the top of the ramp. Um, and this game has some very unusual components, um, one of which being this ramp I'm about to talk about. Um, and it's the thing that Tom Vassell actually hated the most about this game, but I found it intriguing, um, was that there are a number of tracks you go up throughout the game, but instead of them being flat on a board, they're on a ramp. And so up they go. And the thing is the ramp is made of plastic. It's not necessarily the most stable. Um, and if you hit off it, your little um, drowls that you stick in there might actually pop out or fall out. Um, yeah, it's a little awkward. The main game board itself is huge. It's ridiculously big and it's got some incredibly good looking meeples and meeple pieces and stuff like that to go around as well.
well it's a worker placement game um and it's an interesting one um albeit kind of a long one it took us a while to play it and there are a lot of rules and things going on and things to remember um but we didn't like it once it got going we thought it was we thought it was pretty good actually um well maybe that's just compared to the other quint titles um and we we made it to the end it just felt a little laborious later on um and so we were like oh we'll, we'll play it again to see if we want to keep it or not um and no we've not played it since and i don't know if we want to either um i you know what it just it i think hmm, hmm. <laughs> i think it's a good worker placement game do i think we have better probably um do i think it's quite elaborate and big for what it is yeah a little bit i think if like you know two or three of its little rules were missing it would you know you wouldn't have missed them um but it was definitely better than our other queen game experiences this one was very playable and i could understand why people would play and enjoy it um just room in our collection is tight so um yeah our games have to jump through a lot of hoops um to be able to stay and i don't know if agra leaps through all of the hoops exactly um but yeah i think i still think it was worth it it was infinitely better than the other game i had so yeah i'm happy enough with agra actually happy out so the next things on the agenda are far more exciting i don't even know what my husband traded for these what did he get rid of i don't know he did a great job um because i'm very excited that we got a copy of a lubari a nice cup of tea and a copy of aeon's end Woo! Okay, so I'll talk about these separately, which is what I should have done when I listed them. So, Alubari, a nice cup of tea, um, is from Tony Boydell. He's the same man who designed Snowdonia. And it's really apparent the minute you open the box that this is the case. Because this game is essentially Snowdonia with tea. So, Snowdonia was a game about trains and building train track in, like, in Wales. And you would dig up rubble to make room to put your cubes out and get bonuses on where your railroad track was going. And maybe buy some trains that kind of thing um a Lubari is the result of a train track except this time you're going to different stops i think it's in india um to get tea um and the cool thing about the tea in this game or the chai is that you can use it to enhance your basic actions um which is this basically it, it's main it's major difference between it and snowdonia that you can kind of boost things and do things um better um uh, we like Snowdonia a lot. We like Alubari a lot. We haven't decided which one we'd prefer. Um, I think if we had to keep one right now, Alubari is winning a tant, but we do have a, a host of expansions and such for Snowdonia that we've not played with yet. So I don't want to draw any conclusions here, but if you like Snowdonia, you, you should enjoy Alubari. Um, it's kind of a nice version of it. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, we, we really liked it. So we'll, we'll be playing that again and it's definitely staying. And then the final thing is Aeon's End. So um, we've had a copy of Aeon's End War Eternal, I believe the title is, um, since last Essenspiel. And we love Aeon's End in our house. It is the most fun cooperative game that we've played where I can't be bossed around. Um, and everyone gets to build their own deck and do kick-ass things against terrifying monsters yeah it's a it's it's a fantastic game um and i probably talked about it before and we wanted to just get more of it so we managed to trade for the original base box which has um different art but otherwise it's the same game you just get different characters to play with there are different monsters to fight and different spells and things to put in your deck so yeah more of aeon's end goodness you just can't go wrong with that right so that yeah that's been exciting um so quite happy with that so that's aeon's end um so those were our trades this month i was amazed we found anything to trade away i'm delighted um have so as always i ask have you made any trades this month but other people don't seem to trade as much as we do um not sure why that's the case but maybe not even trade maybe have you borrowed a game from someone else this month and tried it out i love borrowing games from other people it's like can i borrow this and see if i'd like to own it myself i think that's also other another great way to try out games a poor a Apart from, of course, board game cafes and stuff, which is a great way to try games without having to buy anything. So that's even a step up from trading. So yeah, let's hear let's hear what you guys thought. And so finally, finally, we go on to the final section. So this is the last bit where I usually talk about what's been going on with the channel, maybe a little bit about me. So if you know, we're only here for the games, now's your chance to you know back on out. Um, <laughs> 
But yeah, so let's see what's been happening this month. Um, I do have one very important piece of news, um, which is that my videos are now going to be available on somewhere other than YouTube. Um, I do actually have a website, but I don't think anybody goes there. I don't know if I would either. I would just go to YouTube to watch my videos. Um, but I'm on the website called There Will Be Games. Um, and I was super excited to be invited to post my work there. And what it's like is, yes, obviously it's a website, but there are a lot of kind of articles as well as videos and that. Um, and it feels really like a newspaper to me. I think it's the kind of place you should go for like board game news and kind of some insights. Um, and I really, really like how it looks and how it's coming together and they've got a lot of really talented people um, writing and creating stuff. So if you haven't checked it out, why not do so? Um, and my videos are going to be hanging out there as well. Um, so yeah, that was a really big um, and amazing surprise for me this month. I'm super delighted with myself with that. Um, so yeah, that was good things. Um, what else has been going on? Um, well, you may have noticed the background's a little bit different here, apart from the fact my map of the world fall, fell down. Um, it really doesn't want to stay up anymore. It was up there for ages and ever since um, every time I try to repair it it just falls down um, but I have got some very cool new lamps so you may see those um, and I'm, I really really like those um, I've been trying to make this space more personal as time goes on but of course that involves time and money um, and so I've been trying to do it bit by bit to make it very me um, because I could just sit in front of a wall of board games I got one <laughs> I've done it but um, when you come here to watch your videos I want you to feel like you know I'm the one talking to you about games um, and I want to you know just be me <laughs> as much as possible anyway um, so yeah um, what else has been happening um, I've got to play a, a decent number of games actually on holidays where I have spent much time at the beach, um, photos here of the beach and the weather's been miserable but I kind of don't care. And I've been working our way through playing games that we would only played once that we wanted to play more of again. So I'm curious to know, do you have a system for how you play your board games? Do you just go in and pick something randomly off a shelf of an evening and are like, oh, I feel like playing this today? Or um, do you have a system where like we're playing every game beginning with the letter A? Mm. <laughs> and most of the time, to be fair, it is games I feel like playing which is grand because there are a number of those. And sometimes it's, I, I really need to play this review copy so I can have all of that ready. Um, and then other times it's very much, well, we should play this once more if we decide you know, to keep it or not because that, that seems sensible. Um, but <laughs> so yeah, I'd love to know how you guys kind of go through your collection because my collection at the moment is the smallest or at least it looks like it's the smallest it's been in some time. Um, and I haven't missed anything I've gotten rid of or traded or sold or anything like that. It feels okay, but it also feels small. And, I want, and I'm like, oh, maybe I should hold on to these things. Um, but I'm trying very hard to be ruthless um, because there's only so much space, but also I want to look at the collection and go, I would play all of these happily. Um, you know, I want to care about the, the objects I own and whatnot. So yeah, I'll have fun stuff with that. Um, also, there is, as usual, a new episode of the Tabletop Inquisition podcast available as of the Monday before this is released. Today should be a Wednesday all going plan um, and this episode we're talking about the best things about board games and you may even hear some of your own thoughts in there as I reached out on the interwebs to see what people thought were the best things about their board games um, and about playing games and that was a really fun episode to make because it was the 20th episode we made so it was much cheering to be had and of course talking about you know your, your favorite things essentially about board games is always a fun thing so you should totally listen in and check that out if you haven't had a chance yet or you haven't heard of it before so yeah so that's good so I'm going to keep this short because I usually try and keep this short and fail miserably but today I'm going to actually achieve it so tune in um next month and I'll tell you more about my board games I don't know how I will have anything left to purchase and what I'll do with this section because we really are scraping the barrel here and why not come and say hello on some of my social media accounts um because I'm on Facebook I'm on Twitter Instagram yeah, I've mentioned them twice in one episode. I sound really pushy, but um, I'm just being genuinely honest. Because if you come see, come hang out there, I do things like badly drawn board games once a week. I do my five favorite or five things I love about a 
particular game once a week as well. Um, you get to see a, sh a selfie. I force myself to take once a week to remind myself I recorded something. All kinds of fun stuff. And I always love interacting with you guys. So take care, everybody. Tune in for another episode and there'll be much more exciting board game reviews to come. Take care of yourself, everyone. Bye bye.